Hey guys, thanks for following along this series. Today I'm gonna to install a clutch and flywheel on this engine build that I'm doing. It's out of the car, so it's pretty easy. If yours is still in the car, you can still do it. You'll just be able to see it easier on this one. All right, time for some free voiceover. We are going to get the engine off of this engine stand and onto a table so that we can install it in the engine. What does this have to do with installing a clutch and flywheel? Absolutely nothing, except it's necessary for me to do for my particular project. Hopefully you've been following along. If you haven't, you can start from the beginning. There's like 36 videos or something of this so far. It's uh, over a year long project that is getting really close to coming to an end. So kind of getting excited about it. I have a hydraulic table special one from Harbor Freight. It's big enough, strong enough to hold this engine and hopefully the transmission as well when we get it back on. All right, just lowered this thing onto the table here. I put uh, most of the weight at the very front. Um, Show you where it's sitting here because I need room for the transmission in the back. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove our engine mount piece here and figure out how to attach a transmission. All right, we bought a new flywheel and clutch for uh, this car. Here she is and uh, just gonna throw this thing in there. It's got a bearing in it. Here is the back of this thing. Looks like it's got a little hole right here where, uh, let me show you. It's going to mount on this little pin right here, a little locating dowel. And uh, I have all new flywheel bolts. You're supposed to get new ones every time because they are stretched to yield and should not be reused. All right, these things are really heavy. Right. Leave this here while I go get the bolts. All right, these are the new bolts. That's the part number there. I don't really know of a great way to do this. Seems like it's just going to be a little bit of trial and error. If you guys at home have any tips, please leave them in the comments. I guess like mounting a wheel, if we had a stud that we could screw in here, it would help align it, but I don't have one. Might have found it there. Yep. Looks 
just like I did. Get all these bolts started. Trying to rock it on that pin and get it inserted. Got to be right, right? I think it's got to be right. All right, now we got to torque these bolts up, but obviously when you torque them, this thing is going to want to rotate. So you need something to lock it down. Um, and if you get a metal bar that has some holes in it, I found this in my tool chest yeah, it's for some BMW tool, I think. And you get a long bolt. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to try to do here. Haven't used this before or done this yet, so I'm not sure it's going to work. But this is the bolt that was holding um, the carrier on here. So I'm going to gently thread that bolt in here. And then I'm going to get another bolt and go through into this hole. So hopefully this plate here will uh, hold this as I try to torque it. Or, I don't know, let me experiment and I might do it from this side over here. I haven't figured it out yet, but that's the plan. All right, I took one of the old bolts from the clutch plate and I got a big long bolt uh, up here that actually came from one of my other tools. Uh, the one for the transmission itself uh, wasn't quite long enough. It made this bar still come in contact and I tried to avoid that. So I'm uh, going to try that bolt there. All right, couple of things. This is the sequence order for how you should tighten them. So you can see you go one, two, three, four in a star pattern. Uh, for tightening in them for each sequence. So there are two sequences for this double mass flywheel. You can see here from the manual, you start with 19 foot pounds, which is not a whole lot. And then you tighten it to another 120 degrees, which is a lot. Okay, here we go, 19 foot pounds. And these things are T55, so got one of these. All right, now I got it set up for 120 degrees. So we'll start back over here. Really testing our oh shit. All right, locking tool failure. Okay, I found a really long bolt that I can thread all the way in until it bottoms out uh, down here, and then I have the clutch plate bolt up here that I'm going to try to use for my locking action. All right, now for this one down here, we're gonna go 120 degrees.
It's a hundred. One twenty. All right, <clears throat> that's a lot. So it came out to seventy one foot pounds, it said. All right, 72 and a half foot pounds for that one. All right, flywheel installed. All right, maybe you guys can answer this for me, but when you're tightening these, uh, it's causing the pressure plate to rotate slightly this way, which is clockwise, but this is attached to your crank, which means from the other side of the engine is turning counterclockwise. And as we know, we were told to only turn this clockwise but it has turned a little bit counterclockwise when tightening that up but nobody seems to mention that or care so does it really not matter that much i've also got a new uh clutch and pressure plate in here i'm gonna be installing That's what these guys look like and this thing right here is the clutch plate alignment tool. I happen to have this from when I did it on the Boxster. Somewhere on this, I think it tells you which side is which. Ah, yes, right here it says gearbox side. So that is the side facing you as you are installing this because you are standing where the gearbox is gonna be. So you just stick the alignment tool in here, it has little grooves. And you just stick the other end through that bearing in the middle. And look, it holds it on there for you. So if you didn't have this tool, what you'd have to do is somehow keep this thing held up in place while you put the pressure plate on it, which would be super impossible. Now, before I install this, I'm just gonna take a little bit of brake cleaner and clean the surface here. All right, nice and clean and try not to touch it again. All right, now at this point, note there are three dowel pins sticking off of your flywheel. And those are to help you align this with the pressure plate, which I don't know where they go yet, but I'm gonna figure it out here. So this bolt hole doesn't line up that direction, so I'm gonna guess that was wrong. Okay, so they go in these little ones, not the big ones. The big ones are for the bolts, the little ones are for the alignment pins. All right, so now all of my bolt holes line up, so that looks good. I'm gonna reuse my clutch plate bolts. Um, I think I've seen some people put a little bit of Loctite on these but I don't think the manual says anything about that. All right, these are T45s. All right, the torque spec for these is 17 foot-pounds or 23 Newton meters.
pressure plate done. Now we can just pull this out. All right, extra bonus content, guys, for watching this long. I went back and watched my Boxster video when I did this, and I realized that I did something kind of crafty. I used this really thick uh, string, and instead of this bar here to prevent uh, the flywheel from rotating when I was torquing it up, I just took some string and I went through here and through where this bolt hole is on here, just like about three times. Um, and this stuff was strong enough to hold it in place without using a metal plate or any bolts. So if you don't have those materials, uh, just rig up something like that. If you want to see it in use, check out my Porsche Boxster 996 clutch removal video and you'll see it there. We got it done. Hope it was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next video.